We pay homage first. Namo Ben Shi Sija Mao Ni Fo. Namo Ben Shi Sija Mao Ni Fo. Namo Ben Shi Sija Mao Ni Fo. We pay homage to our respected teacher, Shakyamuni Buddha. Okay, good. I hope you all are well. So we will continue <laughs> to, should we say study, understand, <laughs> explore, <laughs> explore this book. This is called Way to Home. And um, if any one of you haven't got this book and if you would like a copy, please email us, polam at polam.ca and we can send it over to you because this is the book we are going to use or we have been using for the last 10 sessions and this is actually um, a book uh, done by me with pictures and uh, passages in there so tonight we will be looking at page 31 uh, with this picture beautiful picture so anybody can tell me what kind of flower is this <laughs> Laurie, of course. Catherine, let us see. That is Catherine. That, yeah, Catherine from Saskatoon. It's a crocus. Yeah, it's a crocus, yes. You know what is the, um, you know, the, you see the center of the crocus? Crocuses is red, mm -hmm. right? Red oranges or orange red. Mm -hmm. You know what they are? The scammers. Yeah. Seeds. Do you, Pollen. yeah, yeah, ah, what, and, and, and you know, what, what, can, is it, is it edible? I don't know. Okay, okay, maybe Laurie knows? Um, I don't know about this particular kind of crocus, but it's, is it not a certain kind of crocus that we get saffron from? Yes. Saffron? Yes. Oh, Nora knows about that. Yes, saffron. Hong fa. Hong fa. So saffron can be used as medicinal. In Chinese medicine, it's actually very strong uh, medicine. Very strong. And, uh, uh, but it's a very, very important um, medicine in, in Chinese medicine, Chinese herbal medicine. Yeah, this, uh, and the best, the best uh, saffron comes from Tibet. Saijong Hongfa, Tibetan uh, saffron. And I, I think maybe because of the cold weather, the crocus, um, the crocuses are, are, are kind of different, very hardy and strong. And so the, the, the saffron from there is really red in color. Very, very red. And they said, you, they said be, when they need to harvest those uh, saffron, has to be has to before the sun comes up. And uh, I, have, I, have, I have actually, um, because I didn't know these crocuses, actually, th those are saffron. And one day I was looking at these crocuses. I said, they look funny, they're in the center. So I, I went over and get, get some of those powder and then smell it. And I said, what? It smells like saffron to me. So I looked it up on the web uh, online mm -hmm. and it really t shows saffron and they, they they tell you uh, when you should actually uh, harvest. So can you imagine <laughs> in one flower how much saffron you get, right? How much saffron you get, really, not much, yeah. Okay, so this is my sharing for this picture. And now the floor is yours. <laughs> it's your call, okay? Anybody has anything? Oh, Nora, please, Nora. My first impression was just how intricate the petals were. Yeah. Look at all the things. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even the, the same family, same family of flowers, but yet 
um, so different, eh? Three, f f three f no, actually four, four flowers. There is a bud there, and they all look different, and they are so intricate. Yeah, so pretty. Great, thank you, Nora. I would say um, one flower is beautiful, and three of them more beautiful. <laughs> oh. um, that, <laughs> that is um, uh, myself can do it uh, well, and also with the all together. Mm. More powerful. More powerful. They yeah. support each other. Mm. Yeah. That's nice. Good. Thank you. So, anybody else? Mm -hmm. Laurie, good. Uh, Steve, I, I love the composition of this photograph. I, to me, I look at it and I think it should be a painting. I especially love the spiky directions that the the light green leaves at mm. the bottom of the mm -hmm. I love the, the shadow of the brownie behind with the moss. Yeah. And these dot, dots of yellow. It just looks like a painting to me. Oh. Beautiful. You should paint it then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Laurie. Catherine. A mere very small flower. And um, they're the first to come up. Yes. Um, quite often poking through the snow. So they have to be really determined and mm. very strong and very resilient. Yes, they, they, they are. I think they are. Yeah. But yet they are so delicate, eh? Yes, they are. They yeah. Are so very, very pretty, very beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Very fragile. Yeah, yeah. So delicate and so fragile. And. Uh, with a little bit of rain, you know, then the, the petals are also mushy, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Crocuses, I love crocuses. I only know about crocuses after uh, immigrating, uh, immigrating to Canada. <laughs> 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 Never know that there are, there are uh, we don't see them in Hong Kong. I think because the weather is, um, is, is not suitable for crocuses in Hong Kong. You, probably too warm. Too warm, yeah. I haven't seen anything in, in, uh, like this in Hong Kong. No, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody else? Thank you. Thank you, Cam uh, 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 Catherine. Hmm. Okay. Okay, Versha and then Irene. Yes, Versha, please. Um, good evening. Good evening. So I didn't actually think about the flowers themselves when I saw this picture, but I see this picture like a family. So I immediately thought of the two fam the two flowers as parents, and then the younger one, and then the bud coming up. So ah. For some reason, I keep thinking family when I see this picture. That's so nice of you know all these different uh, different uh, you know um, um, interpretations of just one picture. Yeah, you can see human mind really works wonder. Wonder, right? Yeah, not wonder. Wonder. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Bosha. Family. Yeah, family of crocuses. Irene. Um, Mm. Yeah. But I, I, I'm more resonating with uh, the passage than the picture. I see. So, yeah. Um, it, it's part about love and forgiveness. Yes. So, it's like that I can think of the um, metta mm. and forgiveness. Mm. Um, if I know how to love myself, then I know how to love other people. Yes. In a, a right in yes. A right yes. Because um, we always impose our view on someone, mm -hmm. even with my children. Yes. And the one love, and the bear in mind that what you see they need may not what they want. Yes. So yes. honestly, understanding how to get comfortable with yourself and forgive yourself, that it's easier. To love other people and accept love from other people. Exactly. Yeah, good. Good. Thank you, Irene. So, Michelle and then uh, Mali. Hi, 
Michelle? From Malaysia. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> um, the flowers look so alike and gentle to me. I like purple. Mm -hmm. so much. Ah. Um, they, are, they are like smiling. Um, they have lightened up the blurry and chaotic background. Yeah. And also the rock leaves in the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, the background, to me, the background is like emotional wounds, fear, and struggle to pressure. Mm. And the flowers are like the Buddha teaching, um, spreading love and kindness mm. to the third party environment um, into a place with peace and harmony. Ah. Um, the green long leaf for me is like the bird. Wow, and okay. This, um, That's great. This photo reminds me, I have to always stay focused on now. At the present moment, mm -hmm. um, take time first, smile, and apply the Buddha teaching in my daily life. Good. Well done. That's what I want. You are just like I'm a re. For you are just like a reborn crocus. <laughs> Thank you so much for teaching. You're welcome. You know, Michelle is really like a reborn crocus. Uh, she, I, I don't think she would ever want to speak in front of anybody. Now she has the courage to put up her hand and share her feelings, her, you know, right? Did I say it right? Yes. <laughs> you. <laughs> You're welcome. Take care in Malaysia, all right? Yeah. By the way, do you you don't don't you have to work in the morning? No. Oh. oh we are locking down now. Are you still locked down? We just locked down. Full lockdown. Full lockdown. Oh. Okay. Ah, it's very different, eh? Malaysia is full lockdown, and San Francisco is full open up today, <coughs> and we are sort of you know in the middle. Canadians are always like standing in the middle, neutral. <laughs> Good, well, then give you more time to study. Good, okay, Mali. Thank you, Sito. It, it's uh, another beautiful photo from you. Thank you. Um, so I, I, see, I see spring, mm. you know, crocuses, you know, yes. crocuses. Yes. And also see that um, you focus your attention more on the flowers, mm. the three flowers here, than the background. Yes. Which I see the background is a little blurry for me. So um, to me, it seems like I'm reading from this um, that the these flowers can just rise up. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost like the feeling that we can rise up no matter if the situation is blurry and um, difficult, full of confusion, yeah, obstacles. yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that, that's that's the feeling I, I got by trying to read through the whole picture. Yeah. I don't know whether you're doing it or whether <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know what? It's actually very funny. Um, I, I took these pictures with no intention at all of publishing a book, okay? First thing is no intention of publishing a book. It's just, it's just fun and then it's because I always like photography anyway, but I, I, I put it down for many years and I have never been a good photographer anyway. But anyway, <coughs> so I was, um, I was given this really good camera and you know those those uh, itchiness just come back. You know itchiness of of taking pictures just came back. Then you know in here I saw so many flowers that I have you know I I I haven't seen before or uh, I haven't seen it being so beautiful before. Like hydrangea, I love hydrangea, but in Hong Kong 
we only saw them in the garden and you know I saw them when into the garden I mean in the park so here with hydrangea so you know the first picture I took was hydrangea so it was it was fun and then it was even more fun is I posted a few pictures on my own Facebook account and people commented they said oh beautiful pictures and and one of my friends said you should actually publish a picture book I said picture book no, those pictures are really not good pictures. You know, it's just for fun. But anyway, when, when we started, as, as you have actually read from the introduction in this book, how actually I put that into, into a book because of trying to raise funds uh, for this redevelopment project. So uh, we thought we, well, you all, you all know that we don't go and stretch our hands, ask, well, hey, you give me money, I need money now. You know, I, we're not that kind of people. And, and, and we always think that, you know, when people donate, they need to donate out of their own, own uh, uh, heart of um, generosity, you know, not because I ask them. Be, it's because that they, they have benefited from the Dharma and they wanted to support the Sangha. And that is the wholesome intention. And when I ask and then you give, then this is a totally different thing. So, um, so Yang Sifu actually suggested me to, to, you know, why don't you do a picture book? And so with the help of students from China and with the help of students here, so they actually um, get all these passages uh, from my recordings of, of meditation retreats. And so that was that was it. So when we put this book together, um, we just thought, oh, maybe this picture will go well with this passage and all that. So, but I never never thought that I we uh, we will we will study or explore this book. So there was no intention, but but now we are here. <laughs> so yeah, so that was the story about this book, but. You know, I really enjoyed this, this session, you know, exploring this book and, and having such an interactive uh, session is really nice. You can hear from s different people who have different vision, different see, you know, of, of such just one picture. Everybody sees so differently, right? And then, and that gives us an opportunity and also an eye opener is how how we should really respect others' perspective rather than just imposing ours onto our own perspective onto others. And, you know, from this kind of friendly interactive session, we know just looking at the same picture, everybody, everybody has a different feeling, right? Good. Okay, so, so, so much for this picture. Almost, almost everybody have a, um, you know, a lot of people have shared. So we will look at this. So with love and forgiveness directed towards yourself, you will develop love and forgiveness for those you once thought of as your enemies. Of course, this chapter is talking about connecting. Remember that the topic of this chapter is connecting. That means relationship with others, how we connect with others, or how we are disconnected with others, you know? So it's talking about connection. So c this connection here is talking about loving kindness uh, or uh, love and forgiveness. Um, so with love and forgiveness directed towards yourself, you will develop love and forgiveness for those you once thought of as your enemies. So Irene thought Irene Irene uh, uh, shared about her her view on this passage. And uh, anybody has any view? about this passage you would like to share? Anybody here in the hall or out there in the little box? Nora, good. Nora? I think like you just said about perspectives, it's all about perspectives if you can, you know, love and forgive yourself then you can love and forgive others and um you know if you have an open open heart and mm. um 
and sort of it's kind of like karma in a, in a slight way in that you know if you give out good things you know good things will happen, come back right? to you right yeah yeah great good yeah yes boomerang <laughs> okay jeremy comment on, on the, if you can forgive yourself, how easy it becomes to forgive others. Mm. And, and that it really is so important to, to know yourself that way and to be good, good enough to yourself to forgive yourself. Mm. And that it's so easy to forget to give those who harm us when you can do that. Yes, yes. Yes. Good. Okay. Phong Kang from Hong Kong. Yes, Sipo. Good morning. Um, morning, Sipo. Uh, I'm sorry, again, I've been in a bit late, so I, I, I'm not sure if I may be repeating some perspective others have shared. But for myself, um, I immediately think of um, connect with myself. Mm. Which is uh, what I lack most. Yes. I mean, uh, most of the time, I or we were we are busy connecting with others, mm. trying to work hard, uh, mm. even harder, trying mm. to be better. Mm. But most of the times, we are doing this for others yes. rather than for ourselves. Yes. And so when I see the word love and forgiveness towards yourself, well, actually, I this morning. <laughs> I, I I was asked uh, by someone, have you ever thought of them? What's your life for? Well, this is a simple question we uh, uh, we always ask ourselves or ask others. But uh, um, the day before, I was asked this question again by a good friend. So I um, review again, yes, look at my, my life again. <laughs> huh. and, um, I think, well, yes, I I was not tender enough. I mean, the, we, uh, I, I, I should say, I, no, maybe not others, uh, we try to do good for others, thinking that we are trying to give out uh, love and tenderness, care, mm. Mm. but how about myself? Yes. Well, maybe for myself, I'm a bit too hard for myself, mm. pushing myself out of to do better, to do more, blah, blah, blah. But actually, I'm not tender enough for myself. Mm. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have to, yeah, remind myself I really, really have to love myself. Yeah. More. Yeah. Yeah. Truth. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Very good. Yeah. Self reflection. Nice. Versha. Thank you, Funke. Thank you. reminds me that those enemies mm. um, exist within us as well as uh, externally in the world. Yes, 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 yes. Enemies are not necessarily outside. <laughs> yeah. Arin, yes. Um, um, so when we, when we uh, love and forgive ourselves, or love and forgive others, we have to practice wholeheartedly. Mm, wholeheartedly, and yeah. With, and with wisdom. Yes. Otherwise, uh, you won't see improvement. Yeah, it's it, it. yeah, yeah. If you don't have that wisdom or have the right view and the right understanding, that is just um, mundane love. And sometimes that love could do more harm than, than, than good. Right. right. Good. Thank you. Great. Mali and Tisa. Um, I, I was thinking if you love and forgive yourself, your mind becomes stronger. And if you're stronger, then it would be so much easier to forgive the others. Mm. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Very good point. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. 
because then you don't bash yourself up all the time, right? <laughs> Some people bash themselves up all the time <laughs> and uh, they don't forgive and they don't love themselves. It's, it's, and it becomes a very stressful life, right? You know, when I talk about, when, I, when, I, when, I, when, we were, when you were talking and when I was thinking of this just now at around five o'clock or so, I thought, oh, I shouldn't talk about this. I sh this, this whole PowerPoint, I should really take them all out. <laughs> I don't think it was, it was appropriate. I, I mean, not, not, not inappropriate. I don't think, I think I could have presented in a very different way. Um, but five o'clock, I didn't have enough time to do another PowerPoint. So I, I stick with this one. So I could have done it uh, totally differently, uh, but, uh, but the, the idea just came at five o'clock. <laughs> so, so sorry, you just have to bear with this old thought of mine, all right? <laughs> so uh, let me know how, at the end, how, how, how this one goes, all right? Um, so anybody else uh, before I go on? Okay. No? You have nothing to say? <laughs> you do have something to say. You're laughing. <laughs> she is scratching her head and laughing and smiling and you know and all all blushing too. So so definitely she has something to say but she's so shy to say. <laughs> okay, okay, there you yeah, go. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Sifu. Um, yeah, I I've been I've been going over this passage and looking at it this past week. Um, and also I talked <laughs> I talked about it a couple times and it's um whenever I ask anybody or the topic of metta comes up mm. for for yourself. Yeah. I don't know if it's a if it's a cultural difference <laughs> or if if everybody is like that, but almost everybody I talk to says it's so hard to do it for me to love yourself. It's so hard. Um. Yeah, and and they'll try and do it for for others <laughs> for themselves and for others, but whenever they get to metta and for myself too, I've had to kind of <laughs> I've had to trick myself ah. into doing metta for myself. Oh. So I can't do it like the... <coughs> no wonder why Laurie said that too, right? I, I can't do it the classic... I can a little bit now, but for the first decade, <laughs> I couldn't start the metta in that classic sense of... I see. May I be well and may others be well. Yeah. Because that... With metta, it's not just the words, no, right? Yeah, there's, no. there's something there. Yeah, you generate, yeah. And so I could never spark that with myself. Ah, Just okay. starting to, I think, okay. the last little while. Okay. But, yeah. Hmm. That's well, I don't know whether <laughs> it's a cultural thing or whether it's not a cultural thing. I really don't know. I can't, I can't say. Okay. So, so let us go on. Have you ever made a mistake? So put up your hand, please. If you have, I said, have you ever made a mistake? You have or you have not? You have, right? Okay. Everybody has. Everybody has. Yes, of course. It, it would be crazy if you don't have, if you haven't had, you know, um, uh, ha you haven't had make a mistake because we are not saints and we are not sages. So, so um, for us, in our mind, there is always something or somebody that we might, we might not like or even we may hate or <laughs> we may <laughs> dislike and hate. So, so if there is something like that in your mind all the time, that means you're stuffing your mind you're stuffing your mind constantly with dislike. <laughs> no, show him. Show her. Look. 
This is our dog. <laughs> you see, this is called a Sue mistake. <laughs> she said she has made a mistake. <laughs> She has made a, such a big mistake, a Zoom mistake. <laughs> she meditated with us throughout the last meditation, and she was very good just until this slide came up. You have made a very big mistake, Goldie. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> this is a Zoom mistake, okay? <laughs> but anyway, so <coughs> when you're holding that, in your mind all the time, you're actually repeatedly bashing yourself with that mistake, or with the dislike, or with the hate, or with the anger of somebody, of something, or whatever. So I want to ask you another question is, do you want to be a happy being? Do you want to be happy? Of course we do. We all want to be happy, right? So if you want to be happy, then, you know, uh, uh, learn about how to forgive. And as uh, some, of, uh, some of you said, the enemies are not really just outside. The enemies, uh, the strongest enemies are the enemies inside. Okay? So... Um, so we look at this when we think, oh, well, if I open up my eyes tomorrow morning, what do I see? What do I start to see? I start to see other, other, other mistakes or others' uh, 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 strength. I start to uh, pick on others or I start to praise others. Okay? So... So when, if we don't, if we don't forgive, it's just like this. That looks very scary. But tell you, I mean, look at it. It's an exact mirror image. It's just, we talked about mirror last week. And this is, a mirror image and our eyes our ears our whatever is always looking at the weakness or at the mistakes of others and if we do that all the time we are actually living living in others mistakes all the time and and so when we do that, when we are actually living in such a way, that, that, that mind, that mind is really, really sad mind. It's a very unhappy mind. And sometimes that unhappiness, that anger or that hatred would, would really multiply and strengthen. And, and it, could, it could end up with so much more anger and hatred. But we are very unwise because um, we think, okay, you owe me and you don't, you don't repay me back, whatever that is. You owe me a favor or you owe me a whatever, it doesn't matter. You owe me and you don't pay me back, I hate you. Right? I hate you and, uh, or I dislike you. I mean, using the word hate is actually a stronger word. Uh, and then, and then you say, "Oh, you cheat on me." I mean, we have been cheated many times in our lives, haven't you? People have cheated on you, have they? Have you experienced that? Oh yes, oh yes, people have cheated on me, and and then you say, "I hate you." I hate you. And, and you lie to me, I hate you. So anything, anything, and that, 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 you know, 
that hatred, that anger, that ill will, that animosity could stay there all the time. And, and sometimes we are so, I don't want to use the word stupid, but I'm, not, I'm going to use the word stupid. We're so stupid. We are so unwise. We are so dumb that we actually keep this anger and hatred and ill will, animosity always inside our mind. And we become a monster of hatred. <laughs> if you cannot see it, make sure you enlarge this one. <laughs> when we don't forgive, when we have all this, all this hatred and anger inside, we become like this. And, and then at that time, at that time, we will say, okay, you hate me, I hate you more. You don't like me, I don't like you more. And the next thing is, that's a very sad thing is, not just hate you more, and I won't forgive you because you have done me wrong. Yeah, right? And sometimes we are even more, more stupid. Is I won't forget. I won't forget till I die. Same by Anna. So that's the Chinese saying is, even when I die, I won't forget this. Oh, come on, who wins? The hatred wins. The anger wins. You lose. You think, that you, you think that you win? If you hold that hatred in your heart until, you die, until the moment you die, you don't win. You lose. You lose. So we have to understand this anger and hatred. Uh, you see, I'm talking about the opposite of loving kindness and, and forgiveness. <laughs> That's why I said, I should have done it the other way. <laughs> um, but, you know, this is what it is. Then we could have more and more, you know. Uh, and, and, and so we need to understand anger, ill will, animosity, hatred, dislike, and all these negativities are really, are really the most dumb or the dumbest. Is it dumbest? Dumbest? <laughs> yeah. You know, acting in, in the world. And a lot of time we forget, we forget to really come back to look at ourselves and say, come on, you don't have to be angry. It's okay that you are angry. It's okay that you don't, you don't forgive. It's okay that you are, you are upset but you don't have to. You don't have to be angry over the anger, angry over that, that, that dislike, or angry, or angry because you are jealous of others. A lot of times we are, we are angry over ourselves, right? I'm, I'm angry with, with, some other, with, with others, or I'm, I'm disappointed with others, and I'm angry with, my, with myself being disappointed with others or being angry with others. So, so that, that negativity keeps multiplying, multiplying, and multiplying, multiplying. You don't just have one anger to deal with. You have two angers, three angers, four angers. You, you keep multiplying. Anytime, anytime you start to bash yourself, then you multiply one more, once more. Okay, so at that time, you need to be very aware, of course, if you can be aware, <laughs> if you can remember to be aware, as I said in meditation, mindfulness, there is an element to mindfulness is what? Start with R and end with R. Yeah, re 
remember. <laughs> yeah, start with our and ends with our. It's remembering. There's, a, there's an element in mindfulness. You remember what you're supposed to be doing right now. So then you, 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 you notice that, oh, I'm angry. So you address that anger right there. I, this is anger. And ask yourself, how do you feel now? You feel happy? You feel unhappy? You feel sad? Or you feel ang angry? Ask yourself. And at that time, if you remember to ask yourself, hopefully that anger, that anger or that hatred will stop just right there. So we, we should know making a mistake is actually a very, you know, uh, worldly thing, right? A very mundane worldly thing. We all make mistakes. But forgiveness is a very unworldly thing. It's a very unworldly thing. It's a very, uh, you can say, super mundane thing. So do we want to be a, a super mundane person or do we still want to become a mundane person? stay as a mundane person, a worldly person. Of course, with, with us practicing on the path of Dharma, we want to become a super mundane person. We want to transcend above that mundane level. We don't want to stay in that worldly level all the time, right? So with so many negativities, with so many emotions, whether it's from outside, whether it's inside, we burden ourselves so much. We burden ourselves so much and we carry this on our shoulder. This is, I, I tell you, this is a scene that you see a lot of times in China. People with a, with a, with a bicycle, with a little, um, what do you call? Um, tractor, not tractor. No, trailer, and then they piled it up. You can see, I, I, I actually toned it down um, so that this picture is not so clear. But you can see this man just barely have a place for himself to, to paddle on this bicycle. Why do I put that on there? Why? Because with anger, with hatred, with ill will, it, this... Uh, they are burdens. They are burdens. Without loving kindness, without forgiveness, we are burdening ourselves with a lot of negativities. And these burdens actually affect us. So who's, who suffers most when one doesn't forgive? Can imagine Imagine all these baggages, all these burdens are the actions of enemies, whether you want to call it external enemy or internal enemies. These are all the actions of the enemies that you don't like to see and you don't want to hear. They are burdens. So who suffers most when one doesn't forgive? You, we, ourselves. And then we'll say, oh, so heavy, very heavy, and very, very heavy. These burdens are very heavy. And only, we are only able to feel lighter if we could let go of these burdens. If we could remove one bag at a time even one little back of a time. And eventually we'll be able to feel lighter and lighter and lighter. And if we don't let go of those views that we, we hold onto others or we hold onto ourselves, and we start pointing fingers at others or pointing fingers at ourselves, we actually add more burdens onto, onto ourselves. Only when we start to let go of this ill will animosity, then we will start to feel a little bit of at ease, at peace, light, and, and optimistic. 
Otherwise, we'll overcome with negativity, negativities all the time. How can we be optimistic? How can we look at life? Oh, life is going to be beautiful and bright. No, because we are, we are overly burdened by these negativities. So when we can let go of this uh, dislike and, 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 the, and those uh, emotions that are caused by the so-called enemies, um, we will feel calm and, and quiet and, and, and more confident. So, do we really want to, do we really want to let go? And how can we let go? And is there a way that we can learn how to let go? Of course there are ways to learn how to let go. Um, the, first, the first thing is, anybody knows what is this? The Chinese would know. Yeah, bitter, bitter gourd. Russia knows. Indians eat a lot of uh, bitter gourd. Uh, the Caucasians don't like it because it's bitter and they don't, they don't like bitterness. They always like sweet chocolate. Donuts, cream, icing, because they don't, they, don't, they, they don't like bitterness. But I tell you, life is full of bitterness that sometimes you just cannot get rid of. So live up to it, all right? <laughs> don't sugarcoat it, okay? So, yeah, it feels like that we are being gradually buried alive with all those negativities, yes. Yes, we are bur buried alive by the negativities. Very scary. Yeah, from King said from uh, so the bitter, bitter uh, God. So in order to live a happier day, take a, a happier life, and uh, a, a bit free of miseries and negativities, we need to to know. We need to forgive us. Forgive ourselves, not really forgive others, it's really forgive ourselves. Um, because the burdens are on ourselves, it's not on others. Okay, so the first thing we need to know that there is always a cause for this kind of connection. There is always a cause. Um, if, you, if you are jealous with others, others could possibly be jealous of you. If you do not like others, and very possibly people would not like you. Okay? Um, so sometimes, sometimes we, are, we are even, we are so, so dumb that we, we are so angry with others that... Um, that people don't know that you're angry with them. And maybe eventually you decided to tell the other person that I really don't like this, you, I'm, I have been so angry with you. And that person is, will say to you, oh really? You're angry with me? Why are you angry with me? I don't know that, so your anger is wasted for so long, isn't it? Have we ever experienced that? You have. <laughs> yeah. And you ask, and you tell somebody, I, 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 I hate you. You know that? I really hate you. Then somebody say, oh, really? I don't know that you hate me. Wow, poor you. You have been holding that hatred in your heart for so long? that I don't even know, it's not worthwhile, isn't it? <laughs> it's really not worth anything at all. So, so when, you, when, when you really want to let go, then you need to know there is always, always a cause. That cause, mind you, 
you have to constantly remember the enemy is, is not necessarily outside, okay? Remember that. So that cause could be a cause between you and the outside or a cause between you and your inside, your own self. So, so when, we, when, when, we, when we remind ourselves there is always a cause, then you give yourself a way out. Not an excuse, a way out to so bang you in the head. Hey, because of this, that's why you are, you're angry. Because of this, that's why you cannot forgive. Come on, forgive. So you're banging yourself, you're kicking yourself in the head or in the butt. And, and remind yourself to, come on, wake up, wake up. And when, at the time that you can wake up and say, oh, really, yes, I need to forgive, then that forgiveness actually could dissolve that negative entanglement. So the bitter gourd will not be bitter anymore. If you cook it properly, and with the right kind of spices, the bitter gourd tastes tasty. And even could be is a beautiful salad. If you if we cannot grow white bitter gourd, bitter gourd here, if we can grow white bitter gourd, Taiwan people make very good salad with bitter gourd. And it's crunchy and it's tasty. Especially in the hot summer, it's so is so good. So, so when in, in, in our lives, in this world, only, only thing that could really dissolve that negative entanglement is forgiveness. When you forgive, then you'll be able to send love. When you don't forgive, no matter how much you want to send love, it doesn't work. So for those of you who cannot embrace yourself in metta, reflect upon it. Are you not forgiving yourself? Do you think that you are not good enough to love yourself? Think about that. There must be a reason, right? There must be a cause that you don't want to love or you cannot love yourself. And you may think that you're not worthwhile. You may think that you're not, you, you, you don't deserve. Okay, so reflect upon that. So only after you forgive, then you will be able to love. If you don't forgive, there you can't love. Okay, because when you have that hatred, what well, are you sending out? You are sending out hatred. You're not sending out love. You're not sending out metta. All right. So um, I'm just going to go very briefly on this. This is a professor. <coughs> in uh, University of Stanford, and his name is Fred Luskin. He has a forgiveness project. Um, why he did that project? Because he actually held, has, has been holding a lot of grudge upon somebody who has done him wrong for a long, long time. And he, what he has, for that period of time, he was such a miserable person. And um, he, he noticed that when he felt so miserable, he, 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 he was so emotional, he was so unhappy, he, did, he, he was so, he, he found that he, he did not have a peace of mind, nothing. And so, when he actually started uh, with with uh, with teaching and everything, he he started thinking, "I really need to let go of this grudge." And he he thought, "No, forgiveness is the only thing that that could work." So he actually 
um, designed a, a, a for forgiveness program, which runs in 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 the University of Stanford. And in uh, even during the 9/11, after 9/11, they held big big um, um, lectures and uh, workshops for those people. And it really helped people to forgive and go on with their life. So what he said about forgiveness is really uh, to free and heal ourselves, to be able to free and heal ourselves, to give ourselves space. And uh, he said there are a lot of misconceptions about forgiveness. And some of them I'm going to actually mention tonight so that we, 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 hold, we will start to hold a better, a, prop, a, a, a more a correct a view of forgiveness. He said forgiveness is not equal to, one, condoning to the wrong act or to the mistakes or to, to whatever, you know. So he said for forgiving an offense, for example, like um, he, he, he actually um, um, uh, used an example of adultery, adulterous affair. He said, it doesn't mean that you, 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 you condone the affair, you approve the affair, or, 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 or you agree with the affair. So he said, no. So that is a misconception, is people condone to the wrong act, I forgive you, I condone to you. No, he said, you don't have to. You should not, because we have principles, and there are really rights and wrongs, you know, according to human rules, human morality, okay? So, and uh, he said, he he was he was often often re reminded uh, that we can only forgive that which we know to be wrong. And he said, "You need to know that your partner or your husband or your wife affairs, extramarital affairs was wrong, but you do not have to suffer indefinitely because you were betrayed." So then you can forgive. You can forgive because by forgiving your partner's extramarital uh, affair, you actually remove that burden from your own self. That burden stays with the other person. But you don't have to condone with them, with their act. Okay? And then the second, the second misconception that he, he said is always people think that a forgiveness is equal to reconcil uh, reconciliation. He said forgiveness and reconciliation are not equal. They are not the same. When I, when I first read about this, I thought, hmm. But further thinking about that, I agree with him. I agree with him. Also, reconciliation. He said, if you were the, if you were the recipient of, of uh, childhood abuse or in a very difficult uh, relationship, you can forgive the of offender, but you can make a choice to stay into contact or not. So you can forgive. But that doesn't mean that you, you can still hold that, that close relationship. Yeah, go ahead. The other reason I really like this differentiation is that if the other party is no longer with us, then if reconciliation is equal to forgiveness, then it's beyond hope. It's but beyond? If, it's beyond hope. You won't be able to do it. But yeah. if, if we separate them out, then yeah. whether or not that person is with us anymore, it doesn't matter. Exactly, exactly, yeah. So, so, so forgiveness is really primary 
is creating the peace of mind for yourself. Okay, and it is really creating healing in your life. Not for others, it's for yourself. So everything you come back to yourself, to start off from yourself. And, and it, gives, it gives you a possibility to return to a state where you really can, can start living living with love and trust. Otherwise, otherwise, we will be constantly losing trust in others, in ourselves. Right? Oh, how can I trust them? I don't know whether they are, they are honest or whether they are true. Right then, you're always in that kind of fear, constant fear of being, you know, um, um, betrayed by others, right? And he said, but forgiveness and reconciliation are not equal in that sense. It's then you give your, yourselves a space and you actually re, recreate that peace of mind in yourself and allow yourself to heal. And then the third thing, the third thing is, he said, forgiveness and justice are not equal, are not the same. So you can argue, you can argue with, with anybody at, at court about, you know, about their, their misbehavior. You can state your point. For example, if uh, he, he gave an example is um, uh, you can argue at, at, at the court about your husband not paying uh, alimony, 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 and you can, you, can, you can actually state the fact that he's not paying alimony for, for, the, for the children. But this is a fact. And you should seek justice, you, sh you should seek fairness. But on the other hand, you can forgive him for leaving you. You can forgive him for having extramarital uh, uh, affair, whatever, you know, that caused the, 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 the breakup of the marriage. But yet, you could still boldly and, and, and wisely and, 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 and uh, you know, uh, 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 upfront, challenge him with with the responsibility that he has to carry or she has to carry. So, sorry. Okay, so uh, this is he. He actually, he actually, uh, actually a very interesting. Um, um, website to go on, I, I encourage all of you to really look onto it. Um, and he also said forgiveness about uh, misconception about forgiveness is that it depends on whether he, he or she comes to apologize to me, then I will forgive. <laughs> he said that is not true forgiveness. You don't need to. You don't need to seek others' apology in order to forgive. Okay, so um, uh, uh, and you don't need to remain as friends. Okay. So he said, if the other person's poor behavior was the determinant for your healing then they actually, as I said, they hold power over you, right? They hold control over you. They become your master. So, so he actually, he actually um, uh, really uh, state out very clearly what is the true forgiveness. And it is actually, I, I, I totally agree with it, and I'm sure, and it, it, it actually, um, I think it, it, what do you, what do you say? It actually, it, it is what the Buddha taught too. 
This is a very wise forgive. This is a very wise act of forgiveness, right? And uh, so, remember, forgiveness and, and, and as I as I said, just um, uh, and justice are not the same. Forgiveness and condoning the wrong act are, are not the same, and forgiveness and reconciliation are not the same. So, so how we should really forgive is firstly we need to have this self awareness that that um, we are, we are, we are not forgiving and we are holding grudge, whether it's against ourselves or uh, against others. But bear in mind, one less enemy is always better than one more friend. And uh, I don't know whether you have read the book by um, uh, Carnegie, is um, How to Win Friends. I read that book almost like 40, 40 some years ago. And, um, and it's a great book, even up to, up to, up to nowadays, I think. Um, it's how to win friends and, yeah, how to win friends. It's something with enemies too. No, you haven't read that book? Oh, you should read that book. You should read it. I think it's free, probably free now online. I don't know. But it's a very good book, great book by Carnegie. I think it's David Carnegie, right? Yeah, David Carnegie, yeah. So self-awareness. So you need to be aware that you have this kind of, um, of, 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 of uh, emotion and, and you need to be aware of it. And as I said just now, then you will be able to what? Change the way you think. Change the way we think. Oh, you know, and we always think, oh, I've been hurt, you know, and I'm going to revenge, and I hate you more. You hate me more, I hate you even more. It's, it's come on, it's a vicious cycle. It's not a game that, you know, you, you kick the ball here, I'll kick the ball back to you. No, it's not a ball game. It's our life, you know. <laughs> Don't kick the ball back. Kick a different ball. Change the way you think. And tolerance and patience, remember, always works. And when we tolerate and patience, when we, or be patient, we, this is actually a way to help ourselves to, to deal with our own stress. Because when we start to look at ourselves, if we don't forgive and, and, and forget, then we are holding that and we make ourselves more and more stressful. And initially we tolerate and we be patient and eventually we will just have to say, okay, I don't want to tolerate, I don't want to be patient anymore, I want to just let go. Forget it. Why do I have to tolerate? Why do I have to be patient? I don't have to, I don't have to tolerate, I don't have to be patient, I just have to let go. Once you let go, you give yourself so much space to heal. And of course, to appreciate your own life and don't let others to take away the peace in your life, to happiness in your life. And don't let yourself, yeah, how to win friends and, and influence people. Yes, yeah, Dale Carnegie. And, and, and appreciate life. Life is so precious. And why do you sp want to spend one more minute in carrying those grudge that needs, that needs your own forgiveness to, to let go, right? And also, gratitude. I have so many good people around me. I have so many good friends. I, I know so many Dhamma brothers and sisters. And this just, just a few people, why do I have to get so upset? And you know the most difficult is the one who are closest to you. Your siblings, your children, your parents, your, your spouse. Those are very difficult to let go. Those are very, very difficult because such a strong sentimental tie. 
And uh, well, when they upset you, if that is an external enemy, when they upset you, try to look at around. Hey, I have this dumber friend. I have that dumber sister. I have this dumber teacher, <laughs> and try to try to console yourself. Try to console yourself that you know this one person should not allow this one person to take away my peace. Should not allow this one person to take away my happiness. No matter how close they are to you, try to act wisely, please. Okay, it's not easy. Okay, but it can be done. And also be present right here, right now, and don't always go go regress back to go back to to think about all these old things and old things and old things and that they they hurt me so long ago and now now I I still remember and I hate them. <sighs> come on, come out of it. Come out of it. The meaning of life is right here at this present moment. How you live your life right here, right now. Are you going to live it meaningfully? Are you going to live it meaninglessly by being so so angry with those old old memories, old behaviors of others or whatever? And you 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 lost you lost the opportunity to. Use this present moment. So it's really not worthwhile. I think it's not worthwhile. Okay, so I want to share with you a story right here. Is one. Uh, um, it is a real story. Okay, uh, one 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 in in one uh, one time there was this old monk traveling back on the way back to the temple, and you know. In the middle of his journey, it was pouring, thundering, and everything. And he passed by a house, and he actually knocked on the house and asked the the house owner whether he can give him a shelter just until the rain stops, or uh, um, you know, the, or when the rain actually lessens down, then he can go on his way. And the uh, and and that wealth wealthy family and the the owner said no 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 I can I can give you a shelter I I can even give you a roof, uh, 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 to 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 rest. So the monk went on. You know, in the rain, in the thunder, and 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 got back to the monastery. Three years later, this very well-off man. Went with his wife to because his wife wanted to go to give uh, to get some blessings from from the local temple. So he went with his wife um, to to the to the temple, and they brought a little offering, you know, some fruits and all that, flowers and all that. As soon as they walk in, walked into the the hall, and he this well wealthy man saw his name. In the in the plaque in the in the in in the paper plaque right in front of the uh, medicine Buddha, medicine Buddha is for the, like blessings to the uh, to the life ones right to the living ones, and he asked the little monk he said, "This is my name. Why was my name up there?" And the little monk said, "I don't know. This name has been up there for three years." My sifu came back one night, all soaked, wet, and uh, he said, um, "I, uh, he no, he didn't. He didn't ask. He didn't tell this little monk that was him. He asked this little monk why this name was there. This little monk said, "Well, my sifu three years ago asked me to put this name up, because my sifu said, well." I did not have a good connection with this person. I needed to give him more blessings so that we could have a better connection. And he has been the name has been up there for three years. And this wealthy man felt so ashamed that this monk, this monk asked to have a roof to stand on to to be you know not to be so wet and and soaked. But yet he actually repay him of such a horrible act with a blessing 
for three years, every day, every day. The, 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 the old monk would go to the, to, to go in front of the, the name and, and say, you know, read sutras and say a prayer and, and bless this person. And three years later, this person found out this is what he got from the monk. So this is forgiveness. This is a true, true forgiveness with a kind heart. And it is in a role model for us. So as some of you said, you know, rise up in the beginning of the talk is when you forgive, you allow yourself to rise up. Forgiveness allows us to rise up. You know, and to rise up from, from this day to further up, up, up. So do not think that forgiveness is, is, is you know, you're losing. You don't lose anything, you actually gain. Because you gain peace, you gain happiness, you gain trust. And if you don't forgive because that is, that you, there is a, lot, a very strong, stubborn attachment there. Attachment to your own view, attachment to others' mistakes. And um, you know what? I think forgiveness is even more difficult to do. Um, than, than just loving somebody. I think to love somebody, so-called love, is a, a, a little easier than to forgive, no? You agree? Yeah. Yes, definitely, right? <laughs> Laurie said too, yeah. Forgiving is really not easy at all. But I tell you, once you forgive, you don't become the slave of those grudges. If you don't forgive, you become the slave of those grudges. You become that prisoner. And no matter how long those grudges stay there, you become that prisoner for that long. And even that thing that has happened 30 years, 40 years ago, Okay, so, so if you want to live a better life, <laughs> if you really want a, to have a peace of mind, if you really want to have a happy life, try, try to learn to forgive. And, and the Buddha always say, he always said that, you know, seeking happiness from others. Seeking happiness, if your happiness actually depends on, the, on others, is even even more uh, miserable than a pauper going out to beg for food, to beg for anything, right? So this is, um, this is the original, <laughs> this is the original um, the thing that I actually, made up, which was quite different from the thought that I had at five o'clock, but uh, this, is what, this, is what it, this is what it is. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, it's good. All right. Do you have anything to share? Yeah, I have anything to say? It's a very tough topic, forgiveness. No? Everybody's so quiet. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very tough topic. Mm. I know I stir up something in your heart, in your mind tonight probably. Um, try to forgive, okay? And go on and, um, you know, and um, create more, sp more peace and space for yourself. And that would really, really create more space and that would allow yourself to actually cultivate more peace and harmony with yourself first, then with others. 
All right. Okay. So we dedicate our merits. May these blessings extend to all that we with all the other beings together will attain the Buddha way. May we wish more and more people will encounter the wise words of the Buddha, study them, understand them, practice them, and help themselves to liberate from their own entanglements, miseries, unhappiness, and be truly, ultimately free and happy. Okay, may you all have a good week. <laughs>